All right. So Evan, you can hop on to the next slide. And so this is just a brief overview of the updated forms in EC Impact. We made a slight change to the services section. So that's the section where you input your numbers. We've also updated the narrative section, section just a little bit. And I just wanted to note here, um, if you do have a, a tech contract, uh, there is no quarterly report. So um, we'll be doing all of our um, compliance um, items in the annual assessment for those, those contracts. So we can go to the next slide. All right. So you will start your quarter report like all your others. Um, this link is found on that left-hand side box. It's called the report slash uh, apply section. So you'll have to just find your right cohort um, if you were, depending on when you were funded, but the link is gonna stay the same. It's gonna be that 2023 quarter one report. Um, I've highlighted that on the lower left-hand side of the screen here. So to start the journey, you'll click on that. And then it's going to bring you to the normal set of forms, depending on how many services or how many contracts or programs you have with Ready by Five. And you'll start this, the uh, the quarter report the same way as you as you always have. So um, we can go to the next slide where it's going to be covering the quarterly report services. The big change we have made for these quarterly reports is that you are no longer required to kind of enter in your own um, services. So we took a look at everyone's contract and we have uploaded the services for you. We have provided the exact language um, from your contract into the quarterly report. So this is just kind of like a test one. As you can see, um, some of our services are broken down um, by individuals served and then encounters. Your contract might not look like that. It might look like that. So whatever your, however your contract is broken up in terms of kind of what you're reporting on, those metrics, it's going to all be right here for you. So in this particular program, you have um, individuals served, and then you have encounters. And so when you get into this section, all you have to do, um, you'll see this page first pop up, and, and you'll see um, however many services that you are reporting on. And to report those and to submit some numbers and maybe even a uh, narrative explanation of your numbers, all you have to do is in that top right-hand corner, you're just going to hit the edit link, and then you will be brought into another little window um, that will come up. And so, Evan, you can hop on to the next slide. After you hit that edit button, this screen will pop up. And so what you're going to do first is you're going to fill out the numbers for this quarter. So um, just like you have in the past year, you'll put the number um, let's say number of individuals served for this quarter. And then um, we in, last year we did uh, year to date, but we've changed it to uh, contract start to date. So in that first column for the number of this quarters, you'll put, you know, uh, for example, 25. And if you are in year two of your program, you'll have to look at what you where you were at uh, in quarter four, and you can do that DC impact. So you'll be putting the total number um, of individuals served from the contract start date in that second column. So it's just like year to date, but we've just changed it to contract start to date. And like I said, depending on how far along you are on your contract, this might be your first year. Um, you know, you still might be in that second year. So just make sure that you're filling out those numbers correctly. And then same as last year, we have offered a narrative to um, uh, talk about if the numbers are you know, below 10% for that quarter or any, any kind of context you might want to offer um, to maybe serve as an explanation for the numbers or whatnot, you, you have that opportunity there. So um, we can go to the next slide. And so that was the numbers section. So like I said, we're gonna be putting your, we put your exact language in there. So um, you're not having to look at your contract 
um, and kind of putting the language in there um, so we can now have some consistency with language. So um, we thought that would help everyone out. And then the final kind of update we did to the quarterly report, we just updated some narrative questions. Um, we changed the staff question to more around rather than is there any new staff? We're asking is the program fully staffed? And then if you have had any recent hires or vacancy, you can put that information there. And also in this first quarter, you're going to be putting in some information if you are um, anticipating needing any reprogramming funds. Um, so the first question that is gonna be asked is, are you anticipating expending all of your funds um, for that? You know, we're still in 2023 is that weird year. We're gonna be um, kind of transitioning to the, the federal fiscal year. So um, we are looking at if you're going to be spending all of your funds for the January to September chunk of money you have, so that first 75% of your award. Um, so we'll be asking if you're going to be um, expending all those funds, and if not, um, you know, provide a, an estimate if, if you know you will not. And then the second question we will be asking is if you anticipate your program needing any reprogramming funds. So if you know, the program is really going gangbusters and, you know, you've already expended X amount of your spending and then you've served X amount of people and you just know that you're going to need um, possibly some more funds to get those numbers even higher. Um, we're going to be asking that question here um, and you can uh, provide an answer um, down below and then you just, you'll just add some details like however many numbers um, increased you're going to be or individuals served or and how the funds will be used. And so that is the big changes to the, the quarterly report. Um, Evan, you can go to the next slide and. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep going on here. Uh, we'll do questions at the end. So hold on to them for this section if you have them. Um, we're going to talk about uh, a little data communication uh, that we've been putting together. Um, to try and promote, you know, shared understanding of where the data is in terms of progress for your program. Um, and also make sure you have something to respond to when we're then looking at um, the, the numbers narrative and, and the context for how things are stacking up um, in the context of the monthly data submissions, your program's total collection, and then also contract performance, kind of that three-way uh, relationship. Um, so... On the 20th of the month after the end of the quarter, so the 20th of the month after the quarter, um, so for example, for first quarter of 2023 on April 20th, um, we will be sending all service providers uh, a data table like the ones you can see on the slide here. Um, now this table contains uh, quite a bit of information. I'm gonna break it down for you real quick. Uh, the main thing we wanna talk about though is that this is, uh, this is from the monthly data submissions. So, this is the total summation and, and a, a display of that information um, that has come in over months at those monthly daily or monthly uh, submission deadlines um, and has been wrapped up according to the rules that are agreed upon within the contract. Um, so that's going to be in the context of those program data submission templates or data profile templates that are inside the service provider agreements, uh, usually towards the bottom, usually exhibit F or exhibit G. Um, so when we wrap up the data, uh, it's gonna look like this. Uh, this contract, uh, you can see the dates are a little wonky. We'll get into that in just a moment. Um, first of all, we've got numbers for the most recent quarter, um, encounters and numbers served. Now, if your program is a different encounter unit, uh, these might look a little different. Uh, this is made for a one-to-one -one encounter unit where every service uh, has an encounter and then a number of individuals served uh, that are expected to uh, reach a quota over the course of the year. Some programs are just tracking referrals. Some programs are just tracking encounters. This will be completed according to that context for your program. Um, but the biggest thing here is we've got the most recent quarter available uh, and that's gonna sum um, across the time periods. And then we also have contract start to date totals. Um, now these sum a little differently. It's like a rolling total. 
uh, during each one of these date windows, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a total submission. So uh, you can see we've got quite a distinction in Q1 for the lead environmental testing program. There have been 677 encounters since the start of the contract, but only 60 during quarter one. Um, so that kind of asymmetry uh, will be present. Um, the length or the uh, structure of this will mirror um, the structure of the metrics report in your quarterly report. So uh, the names of the metrics will be the same uh, and the language used in the rows will also be the same. Um, metrics will be broken down by contract using the agency program name. Now each contract has at least one service uh, and these services are, are elaborated in the tables inside the contract. Um, so that's usually exhibit D or E uh, where the services are laid out with their quotas. Um, so this language should be shared and should be traceable again back to those service provider agreements. Um, after we've got the contract information and the agency information, um, there are two date elements. Now these are based on calendar years. Calendar years are January 1 to December 31, and that's been the basis of all of our contracts. Um, so when we wrap up the data, uh, we'll be reporting it based on calendar years and then quarters inside the calendar year. So that means Q1 is going to be January through March, Q2 will be April through June, et cetera. Um, the tables will also only include information beginning at the start of your contract. Um, so that'll be January 1st, 2022 or January 1st, 2023, depending on the funding round. If you have multiple contracts um, uh, at your service provider, um, they'll be staggered. So there'll be some that'll have information broken down for 2022. Uh, and there will some that'll just have that information for 2023, again, depending on that contract start date. Um, for reporting inside the quarterly report, you're going to have to focus on this line. Um, uh, this line will contain the numbers, you know, contract to date, and then over the course of the most recent quarter. Uh, and they're meant to give you, again, that context or relative match between the official record of contracted activities, which, again, is, is what is submitted to Kent County Health Department and the internal record of services kept within your programs. Um, our hope is that this context will be used to ground the discussion in the data narrative section. Um, and if there's problems you notice or realize, uh, we recommend you bring that up in your narrative section because um, we're gonna have to work to create better correspondence between our data sources. If, if these numbers aren't adding up, uh, there's a number of problems that may exist and, and we need to figure out which ones and, and how to resolve them. Um, so again, these will be going out on the 20th of the month after the end of a quarter uh, in time for you to be able to use them in your analysis for the quarterly reports, which will come in uh, usually at the end of that month. So uh, 10 to 11 days later. Uh, that's it for me. Tom, I'm going to turn it back over to you for the questions. All right. So that is our little spiel. Um, are there any questions? Um, you can either unmute or you can type them in the chat and we can um, talk about it. Go ahead, Celeste. So just for clarification, for Strong Beginnings, because we have two service deliveries with um, Strong Beginnings Direct Services, but then we also have Baby Scholars. So when I log in or Peggy logs in, we're going to see our Strong Beginnings, and then we'll see Baby Scholars as a sub bullet under our contract with its own contract. And then we'll see the quarters that pertain to, strong, to just Baby Scholars, or will we see all of them? Celeste, are you talking about in EC Impact or that, um, that data communication we were just the going The data over? communication, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the data communication will have um, everything for the service providers. So uh, in the example that you're talking about, Celeste, for Corwell, yeah, there will be information for um, the contract for Strong Beginnings and the contract for um, Baby Scholars. And then the services will be broken out. I believe each one of those programs okay. just has one service in their contracts. But um, yeah, so that'll be sent to uh, yourself, Takia, um, Peggy, and then and then also Maria. Um, okay. Maria thank you. Okay. Um, Perfect. And it should be shared. You know, it, should, it it'll be the same. A, a useful, hopefully, a useful comparison for both contracts. Okay. Thank you.
Any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, Takia asks, will these updates be available for us to reflect back on? Um, yeah, I, uh, we are going to be recording this um, and we'll put it on our website. Is that kind of what you were um, referring to? Yes, yes. Yeah, so we'll have um, this recording put on our website and then hopefully maybe um, like some, some sort of outline, it's kind of like a paper thing, just to just to go over these updates, you know, just a short little uh, one pager. Okay, thank you, Kyle. If you didn't want to watch this 15 minute video, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have a little shorter uh, guide for you. Okay, thanks, Kyle. No problem. Any others? Ah, uh, Stephanie asks, is, it, is there a narrative section to report out on prioritizing parent funds or what will that report out look like? Uh, Stephanie, yes, we um, there'll be a question for you if you had um, that prioritizing parents fund, um, you'll just update it right in the quarter report, yep. Good question. Yes, this is Kathleen and following up on that question, when we're answering the budget questions earlier on, are we breaking out the PPF budget funds or I mean, uh, so when you talk about that, you know, of being within 10% and are you going to meet it and, and that type of thing? Yeah, so for that 10% question, that will be um, based on your numbers, but also in the uh, narrative section, there's going to be a spending question. And so for that particular question on the spending, you'll just respond um, just with your, um, your main program. So, just so you will be, so for you, Kathleen, you'll just be responding to the play and learn program. But um, in terms of, any PPF funds, you would just answer in that question that we have, you know, it's going to say, you know, if you've received PPF funds, you know, update us on spending and, you know, activities. So, um, so for that, the main narrative question, just stick to the plan learns <coughs> um, and then you, you'll be able to um, talk about any PPF funds in the question just pertain to the PPF funds. So you'll have two chances. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, if there are no other questions, I am always. Oh, did Drew have a question? Is there a hand raised? Oh, Drew, I think you're on, you're muted. Oh, hang on a second. Hold on a second here. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Looks like it was um, just an accidental on mute. Yeah. Oh, okay. No problem. Well, like I was saying, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out either to me, Christine, or Evan. And if you have any questions on the report or any of the data communications, um, feel free to email, call, and we will be available. So any last, I'll give one more opportunity. Any, any more questions? If not, um, I want to thank you for joining us. Like I said, I knew it was going to be just a short little update. So I appreciate everyone coming on and, and learning with us. And so, like I said, this recording will be up on our website and also with um, a guide here shortly. I am anticipating opening up the quarterly reports um, 
early next week. So you'll have um, around a month to complete those. And like I said, they're going to be due this quarter since the um, April, the last day in April falls, I believe on a Sunday, I believe it's going to be May 1st is your, your deadline. So with that, I wish everyone a good start of your week and enjoy hopefully the spring weather that's coming. So thanks everyone. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us and we will be around. So thank you all. Bye-bye.